as to understand the notation that's going on. So when I have f plus g of x, basically all I'm asking you guys to do is add the function f of x plus the function g of x. That's all you guys are doing. So when you guys see f plus g of x, it's just saying add f of x, add g of x. Um, so I'm basically just going to do the square root of x minus 1, which is f of x, plus x squared plus 1. Let me write it like this, because I had some students get confused. Do you guys see how the red kind of separates the two functions? Okay. Now, some of you guys have equations that um, are not like terms. Some of you guys have equations that are like terms. Some of you have fractions. If you have fractions, you've got to have common denominators to combine them, right? So it all depends. Your, every homework problem is going to be totally different. In the example that I'm doing, none of these are like terms. So I can't add anything together. Okay? So that's it. That's my final answer. My example is done. Some of you probably have something that's very similar to this. You're done. Some of you might have variables you can combine or numbers you can combine. Combine them. Some of you have fractions. Get common denominators and combine. Does everybody see how your functions are different? So you have to do different things. There is one thing, though, I also want you to understand is we're also going to work on when we combine them, I'm also going to start asking you guys the domain. We all know we need help with domain. So when help, talking about domain, I want you guys to think about two things. What are our restrictions on our domain? And the two things that we talked about, the only two things that we focused on this class or so far in this class is you cannot have a value of 0 in your denominator. Nor can you take the square root or any even root of a number that is less than um, 0. Does everybody see that? Right? So in my example, do I have a rational or a square root here? I have the square root, right? So remember, to identify my domain, all I know is any, whatever's inside my domain, which is x minus 4, I know has to be greater than or equal to 0. So I add 1, add 1. x has to be greater than or equal to 1. And let's test that. Can I plug in 1? Yeah, 1 minus 1 is 0. Can you take the square root of 0? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. And it would be 0 plus 1 plus 1, which would be 2. However, any number that's less than, any number that's less than 1, though, would make that a negative, which I can't do, which would not be a part of my domain. So my domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to 1. Huh? What? Sorry, I'm, I, I'm not like listening. I didn't hear you. Sorry. Why do we need to know it? Because that's going to be the question that we're going to be asking as far as what the domain is. Because the domain is telling you what values you can evaluate this function for and what values cannot evaluate the function for. Okay? And it's going to become very important when we're thinking, um, when we're going to get into modeling and so forth, we need to understand what values we can plug into the function and what values we will not be able to plug into the function. Okay? Yes? Um, remember, domain is just representing the x values. So it's not a coordinate point. It's just remembering x values. The lowest x value you can do is 1. And since you can plug in 1, I use the bracket. And 1 comma infinity, because it can go to infinity. All the x values. The lowest x value is 1. The highest x value is infinity. It's kind of like, remember the intervals of increasing and decreasing? We only talked about x values right? from the interval. That's kind of like the same thing. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is what about, instead of asking you to add them and find the domain, what if I said, why don't you add them and evaluate? Well, ladies and gentlemen, all you do for this case is add them up and then plug in your value. So now your input value is 2 instead of x. And let me just give you an example. If I had f of x equals 2x minus 1, right? If I said what was f of 2, where would you put? Let's do f of 0. If I said f of 0, where would you put the 0? in for x, right? You replace your input value x with 0. So it would be 2 times 0 minus 1, right? Yep. OK. So here is saying f plus g of 2. I want you to add the functions, and then instead of using x, I want you to use 2. So I already have the addition of them. Yes? For both. So now you're just going to do square root of 2 minus 1 
plus 2 squared plus 1. Well, 2 minus 1 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 2 squared is 4 plus 1. 6. That's it. Done. Okay? Hold on one second. <coughs>